Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button and I'm a granite sculptor. Uh, welcome to video number eight of the virtual stone carving apprenticeship. All right, today we're going to talk about some basic tools, tool chest, uh, more about setting the studio up than specific tools like chisels or hammers or anything. And so um, we'll start at the beginning. Now, I mentioned in one of my other videos that when I started my studio, decided to start my studio, I didn't own a chisel. All I had were the two hand machines I got during my apprenticeship. Well, technically that's true, but technically it's not. Um, while I was living up in Vermont and cleaning out our old house during my apprenticeship, I was fortunate to find my grandfather's tool chest. Now, he retired in Oh, 60, 65, I believe. Um, they found he had dust pretty bad, and uh, so um, they told him to move to the country and get some fresh air, and that was it. And so uh, he did. And when he did that, they uh, downsized, and he retired, and his tool chest went into the basement of our old house in Vermont, over in Chelsea. And uh, none of us really had any idea that was, uh, you know, it moved in. The tool chest must have got there. We built the house in 70, 69, 70. So at some point it came over there and it'd been there my entire life growing up. When I was little, we never, never looked, never knew, never had any idea about it. And so, um, but as you can see, it's got all of his tools in it. Um, he retired before the time of carbide, and he was uh, uh, he was a finisher, so he had tools related to surfacing stone as opposed to carving. Lots of plumb blocks, um, some hand machines, some bush chisels, some old hand axes, and uh, other tools specifically related to, to finishing. Um, and so, that was really cool. I was stunned. Found his apprenticeship papers and some other stuff that I uh, posted as well. And uh, But to have my grandfather's tools and tool chest was really great, but there really wasn't anything in there that was relevant to the work I was doing. So, but it did provide me the opportunity to try to do my own tool chest as an apprentice chest. Now, this was just something I wanted to do. Built it traditional with, you know, the reinforcement with the metal straps that come off the crates. The wood was all crates from the stone. And uh, I did compartments on the inside, similar. But I set it up in a way that I could, you know, improve on the design and I could put my chisels up here so I could carve. Now, I didn't have any chisels. But uh, we did a couple of events with it, and it was fun, and it was an exercise, and you know, made the handles and everything's just just real plain. Um, but it was part of tradition. But I never figured I'd you know have anything to do with this once I left Vermont. So this just was a souvenir of my time in Barrie. While I was in Barrie, um, we had a, I worked with my cousin and. Uh, so let me show you what he taught me. Okay, that's my cousin Andy Hebert with the Union Soldiery cut right at the end of my apprenticeship. And some photographs of, of my apprenticeship time, copy of my grandfather's indentureship contract from 1919. <coughs> There's even a picture of my master sculptor Gary hugging the statue and, and Andy grinning away. We had a good time at Celestial. Andy had designed a tool chest that was similar to some he'd seen to contain all his tools. And this one's a little bit bigger than his, um, but it's got courses of 2x4 and 2x6 on the side that are all drilled to mount your chisels. And, you know, I got a drinking cup, got a mirror, because you get stuff in your eye, you want to be able to find it. Uh, I've got a, some plumb blocks in the back that I use, a couple sets of regular ones, and some ones I made, my gloves, just miscellaneous chisels. I, I 
this is just the day-to-day -day normal this is pretty much the way it looks um, and have my various tools my rubber knife um, my triangle for cutting letters for straight edge to you know when you're cutting and uh, just just different tools and wedges and shims and and uh, a little bit of oil you know some some uh, rulers like I mentioned cutting off rulers got a whole bunch of them here and then it's got a drawer that's you know perfectly organized with papers and stuff for your hands when they get chapped a little bit of everything and but this is this is my tool chest and uh, I don't use it as much as I used to. Um, I don't work as close to the bench as I used to. I, I have a small studio and things tend to get accrued here and it's really close. The suction works better a, a little further away from the bench. So, um, but having a pencil sharpener, having some various tools, things you'll use, this is what I use. I've got a lid for it. I made a cover, um, but it doesn't really fit because I've got it sort of nestled in around the suction. Um, the only real consideration when you build this is if you put much of anything for tools in the drawer, it really needs to have good good glides, good sides on it because the drawer can get heavy really fast. It's got real handles to pick it up. Um, and like I said, I don't move it as much anymore. Uh, it, it works really well. You can stick it right on a set of bankers, these sawhorses I've got, and it's perfect. Um, so, but that's all granite tools. I've got hand tools here with a number of hand axes that, you know, I picked up at a blacksmith uh, tool shop down in Alberton before they went to the scrap. And then I've got a separate chest for soft stone. I just made a, a duplicate chest and I put it here and I've got my carbon hammers and my, my, uh, mallets where the poly mallets I like a lot and some hand tools for limestone and then some some hand chisels and machine chisels for marble and you know I, they they get rusty if you don't use them and you use them just a little bit and your hands polish them right up another pencil sharpener over here same deal with the drawer drawer accrue stuff if you let it and uh, just got to have good sides on it so my workbench goes from having my granite chest my hand tools, my marble chest, I've got a small vise and my grinder here on the end, trash can, and generally I carve right out here uh, where the suction reaches and so um, I, I've been working in this spot up here towards the front recently. Um, I do have suction that runs from the grinder all the way. There's a big torque unit in the back with a couple of old Roomland booms that uh, I salvaged and restored. Um, my lamp, it's just a lamp I made up, real similar to the one we had at Celestial. It has just a wing nut to, that I can loosen and adjust the rod up and down. And it does have three feet. I use three feet for my lamp because that's really critical. You'll break these light bulbs. But I just bent up a rod and mounted it. I've got an extension I can clip onto this rod so I can get another several feet if I want it to be really high. And, uh, but it's a tool chest like this will get your tools organized. It'll have a place to go. You can scale it down. We built one for a, a, a apprentice that was here. Uh, last year and we built a cabinet under it so it had two or three larger drawers or shelves under it and it was on casters real heavy casters uh, so he had a place to put his tools as he started working and then you could put a lid on it close it up and you're all set um, we'll pan over while we're doing this let's talk about the back wall we're going to talk about pointing machines the chassis or the crochet or the armatures or whatever you want to call it. We always call them the chassis. I've got several and the way I do it's different than the way I've seen it done on the computer. Uh, and then under this we've got some beam calipers. Now most people aren't going to know what those are for. Those are calipers or compasses. Got a few composite uh, Italian compasses 
that I probably don't pronounce right. I'm not Italian, so I don't really care. Got some belts and slings, straight edge and level. And then I've got some more compasses or beam calipers. And we're gonna talk about all that because I'm gonna show you how to use these the proper way, as compasses, not as calipers. And we're gonna show you why these are so important and why there's different ones uh, that don't match. Those are more tools that you make that you can't buy. And uh, so, and that's the easy way to store them is to have that V, uh, this actual, this smaller V, um, you can make a rack to go right on the back of your tool chest if it isn't on a, on, a, on a workbench where there's no overhead. If you've got that out in the open, you can hang them right on the back. That's what Andy did with his, and it works really, really well. So, um, I, there aren't any real dimensions on this. If you've got room to build one that's three feet long, great. If you've got room to only build a short one and you only want to put tools across the back, great. Um, there's there's lots of ways to approach it um, but this is the real thing this is what Andy taught me about and what he used and so I built my own and then as tools piled up I built a second one and it keeps everything organized I can find my tools use my tools and uh, whatever I need is right there easy to get at and it works really well so uh, out my suction is here. I've got the suction booms. I've also got my air hose hung on. It's plumbed in with iron pipe. I got it on a boom overhead, so these are easy to work with. Um, all of my pipe is angled up. And what this will do is that here at the bottom, at the end, that's the lowest part on the whole system. And so I can easily open that valve when there's not pressure and drain the water off. Um, the pipe goes around, all the way around, above the calipers on, on the wall over here. And same thing, I've got a takeoff, I can plug a hose in there, but I've got a drop here that discharges outside so I can open this valve and run out the water if there's any air pressure in there. Um, I should show this wall. This is really important. I've got a couple of rakes, a fork, a shovel, broom. These are tools you use to keep your floor clean. And they're right here where they're really handy. Nothing ever goes there except those. They're dedicated, they live there, that's where they stay. And so I can instantly clean my floor up. And you gotta think about keeping things organized. You know, obviously we've got, this is the crane here with uh, all the chains and belts and slings and whatever, but um, how you set your studio up, make it efficient. Have your tools to clean up, have your tools you can access to carve with, have your grinder right there where it's easy to take two steps and sharpen your tools, suction to keep you safe, but having a nice organized tool chest really helps take care of things. So um, we'll uh, put this together and hope this helps. Um, and we'll move on to the next video. But once again, my name is Clint Button here at Carolina Sculpture Studio with the Virtual Stone Carving Apprenticeship. Thanks for stopping by.